So that's some jazz improvisation going on there. And in fact, there's only one musician actually playing and the, all the parts you can hear around it, they're being improvised by a computer, by some software. Uh, so let's find out a bit more about it. It's called Flow Machine and it's actually a project of Sony's Paris Research Labs uh, from where the software's creator, Francois Pache, has been telling me more. The idea is to build machines or software, if you want, that basically help people enhance their creativity. And it tries to do so by giving tools uh, with which users can literally manipulate styles. You can envision those tools are as ways to play with the styles of your favorite composers. In the 1980s, I had a keyboard by, I have to say, a rival Japanese technology company that had a function where, where I could play in a melody and it would put in the chords. And it made my really bad melodies sound incredible. And this was 25, 30 years ago. How is this different, what you're doing? Indeed, you have lots of keyboards having those kinds of uh, features. But uh, w what happened there is that the, the harmonization it creates is, is uh, as we say, pre-programmed. The big difference, our systems are not programmed. There is a very general machine learning program which takes as input what we call a corpus, that is a set of examples. For instance, you can give the set of uh, operas by, by Wagner, and then it builds automatically a model of the style, and then it will build orchestration in, the, in that style. Or if you want to compose melodies in the style of uh, McCartney, you just give you know, a set of melodies by McCartney and then the system by itself finds the pattern, analyzes the essence of the style and tries to, to distill it in the new context that you are playing. You know, there is a song, very famous song in jazz called Giant Steps, uh, composed by John Coltrane. It goes like, da, 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 da. Okay, you could actually play the original song by Coltrane in just a few seconds. And then I have an orchestration made by the system in the style of Wagner. You can hear a piano with lots of notes, and you can recognize some Wagnerian patterns. But still you can recognize also the melody of Giant Steps. So it's like if uh, Wagner had actually orchestrated Giant Steps. You know, what is really exciting is not so much to have a machine that generates a new piece in the style of Miles Davis. What is really great is if I could have a, a machine that generates a piece in my style, that I can control, that I can say, yes, it's very much what I wanted, then yes, I like it, yes, I can recognize my ways of doing my patterns, my chords, my whatever, and it's mine. But I could not have done it alone, you know. I needed this extra help to produce this particular combination of, of notes or chords. And, and finally and briefly, is this in a product yet or is this really, is this quite a long way from being something that the consumer would have? It's not a product yet, but I definitely have the vision and something I'm trying to push within Sony actually, that style can be a new form of uh, music uh, content, you know. Today music, music types are basically uh, audio files. So here I'm suggesting that the future of music could be not about selling only songs or fully uh, produced uh, music pieces, but selling styles. And styles could become a, a musical asset, actually an object of uh, a computational object first, but then an object of uh, a business object. And I think it's really, it corresponds to the, the way people want to, to enjoy music today. It's much more active, you know. It's, it's much less, I want to listen to this song, and much more, I want to create my song or my stuff, you know, with what I like. And I want to have the feeling that it's mine, you know. I do know. Francois Pache there. Now, he's been collaborating with Professor Mark Dinvenot, who's a computer scientist at Goldsmiths University of London. And Mark also happens to be an accomplished musician himself. In fact, he was the one that you heard at the top of this item, who is doing that jazz piano improvisation. The other day, I popped in to see Mark and his piano at Goldsmiths. The basic idea is that you look at content, for example, the way that a jazz piano player plays. So you can look at their style in terms of what notes do they play, what progression do they play. So if they're going from one chord to another chord in a piece of music, there may be a way of voicing that chord, there may be a way of articulating that chord rhythmically. 
all of these are elements of a particular piano player's style. So if you can capture that style, rather than just recording them so that you can listen back to that one track, you record elements of their style. Then you can take another piece of music, use the techniques that Pache has developed in order to think about how that piano player would play on another piece of music. Can you do this in real time? Yeah, absolutely. The system can work in real time. So you can give it a new tune. You press a button and he says, I'd like it in the style of Take Six, which is this incredible gospel singing group from the States or in the style of a classical composer. And every time you press the button, it comes up with a different version in that style. So you could take the style of me. I'm a composer. Composing in your own is difficult because... Sometimes you have to be the creator. You, can, you put things out there, you play a phrase, you play another phrase. Well, how do you know one is better than the other? If you're working with someone else, or if you're working with a computer system, you can make sure that you're in the same role. So, for example, I could be the creator, and the system could be telling me, that works, that doesn't, this doesn't, this works. But it could also be the creator, and it could create from my own style. So you could have a look at the database of my compositions, of my playing, and say, hey, Mark, how about this? This is legitimately in your style as a composer or a musician. So in in the case of Francois' software, the Flow Machine software, what I would do when I was playing in the lab is that I would, first of all, give it, you know, the bass line. Like a blues or something like this. So then it would have, and I'd play it at different levels. You know, I'd play it, you know, maybe the first time I'd play it just one to the bar. Two, three, four, and then then by the end I'd be kind of walking bass line. And then, you know, the, the, the bass would be there and I'd start playing chords. Now, my style's in there. The voicings I use, I could use that voicing for the same chord. I could use a different voicing. But also, the way I'm playing, it's kind of, you know, every jazz musician is, is different in the way their touch is different, their feel is different. And I build up this bass. This, this, so I've got the bass lines there, different bass lines from me. I've got different chords from me. And then I start playing the tune or some improvisation. And then suddenly, I've got a whole orchestra there. The machine is playing back bass and chords if I'm soloing. But if I choose to play chords... The machine plays back to me elements of the solo that I played and elements of the bass line. So it's clever enough to work out what I'm doing on the piano. As you'll hear from this clip, the effects are sometimes surprising. And as a musician, it puts you in new territories, which is very exciting as a performer. I feel like doing my late night radio voice there. Bill, did you enjoy that? I enjoyed some of it. Um, oh. the, 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 the cold train into Wagner did make me win. So, but as a demonstration, it was really interesting because there was, I love cold train and Wagner, putting them together, painful, but it was you know, a, a really impressive piece of composition. Uh, and the whole idea, I think, uh, of sort of what's happening here is fascinating. The, the idea that you can do enough to, to program a, a piece of software to interpret what a human is doing and then respond to them, that call and response that's the essence of musical improvisation like this, fascinates me. They, they've made so much progress so quickly compared to the early experiments. But one thing that troubles me is unpicking who the ownership of the music. If I do something in the style of another composer using um, this software that the Sony guys have put together as well, is that my composition? or is it Wagner's? I, I don't know. If you use it, but if I write something on this laptop in front of me, you know, is it mine or is it the person who wrote the word processing software? I, I, th- I, th- I don't... That's I, different though, isn't it? I, I think that it might help us to be more sensible about musical creativity if we acknowledged that there is no one source, there is no one author. You know, Wagner was original, but he wasn't entirely original. He didn't start from nothing. Jazz improvisations, we work together in this. And yeah, in but... fact, perhaps having a semi-intelligent, capable computing partner in a composition will help us be a a little more relaxed about such things as ownership and focus instead on the beauty and quality of the music. But your software, your word processing software, doesn't allow allow you to write a document in the style of Charles Dickens, for instance. It could do. I could easily write some software that would do that for me and then we'd have your problem. I don't think that's a real problem. What I think is interesting is, is the music any good? On that, that I certainly agree. That is it. Agreement is breaking out. We'd better stop. I'm Gareth Mitchell, the producer's Colin Grant. We're back next week. Goodbye.